peace, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the human heart. Its timeless mission is to seek out tranquility, to explore the depths of grace, to boldly go beyond the noise of conflict, into the unknown realm of stillness and rest. Wait a minute, is that even possible? Have you ever wondered what it really means to experience peace when everything around you is just going cuckoo crazy? Well, if you have, stay tuned for another session of The Mobile Sanctuary. Welcome to the Mobile Sanctuary Where the broken find their way In the quiet of your heart You're never alone Welcome to the place you call Hello, and welcome to the Mobile Sanctuary. Thank you for joining us. Here is your host, Pastor Phil Diaz. Hello, and welcome to the Mobile Sanctuary. I'm Pastor Phil Diaz, and this is Church Anywhere. Amen. It's so good to be able to have all of you log on and join us for tonight's session. Now, if you will, please take a moment and be able to hit that subscribe button or please hit that share button. And what that does is it really does help us spread the reach of this channel far and wide to as many people as possible. Also, while you're here tonight, make sure you use the comments section. Please drop us some comments and let us know how you're doing and how we can best pray for you and how we can best connect with you. All right, well, let's get ready and let's dive into tonight's session. Is true peace possible in this world? When we look around, it feels almost unreal and something that we can never truly see happen in our lifetime. We're surrounded by conflicts, troubled minds, and a constant rush of time as we go from one thing to the next. It seems brand new wars are populating themselves everywhere and the news headlines are constantly filled with fear of the unknown. Yet, as humanity searches for peace in seemingly quiet moments, in self-help strategies, or in brief escapes, true peace seems elusive, a dream that slips away just as we think we've grasped it. But what if true peace goes deeper than the fleeting calm we try to create on our own? In the stillness of our hearts, there's a whisper of something more, a promise of peace that holds firm, even when the world is anything but peaceful. It's a peace we glimpse in moments of grace, a peace that feels like a gentle reminder that there's something greater ahead. One day, this peace will be fully realized, a peace that won't fade or fail, a peace that is not just a possibility but a promise, waiting for us in the presence of the one who is peace itself, the one who is the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Until then, we hold on, knowing that each moment of calm we experience now is a small glimpse of the everlasting peace. Have you ever found yourself overwhelmed with the noise and the chaos of life? Now, maybe you've asked yourself, how can I possibly find peace in the middle of this crazy world that we live in? And maybe you feel that way for, well, it could be a number of reasons. Maybe you're a new parent and you have a newborn child and you are in that season of life where that baby is just crying all the time. Trust me, I understand that. Maybe you're in a season of life where you just simply work in a place where everybody just simply talks about everybody and everybody's business. Uh, maybe you're in a season of life where you're in school right now and just simply your friends or all of your different schoolmates, basically they're just all talking negatively to each other about things. Maybe you're just in a season of life where you're just facing a lot of stress and it is just simply making you feel very uncomfortable. Maybe you're battling a physical illness that's just wrecking havoc within your life. Now, whatever your situation is, you may be asking yourself, how can I possibly find peace in the middle of all of this? It's a question that many of us grapple with, especially in today's fast-paced world. But Here's the good news. 
There is an answer. There is a way that we can find peace, even when everything around us feels like it's uncertain or it's filled with storms or troubles. Tonight, we are going to explore this question deeply and we are going to discover practical ways to experience the kind of inner peace that we need to have. And our journey begins tonight with a powerful verse from the Psalms. Let's check it out. Our main scripture for tonight comes from Psalm 4610, which says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. This is a powerful verse written by the sons of Korah. This group of Levite musicians and poets contributed several psalms to the Book of Psalms, reflecting a deep understanding of God's power, protection, and sovereignty. Psalm 46 as a whole is a song of confidence and assurance in God's presence during times of trouble. It is often considered a psalm of trust, emphasizing that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of need. The psalm reflects a world in chaos, mountains shaking, waters roaring, nations in uproar. But amidst all this turmoil, verse 10 stands as a moment of God's command and comfort. This verse also calls us to a deeper relationship with God, encouraging us to embrace the stillness that allows us to experience His peace and assurance. It is a timeless reminder that God is greater than any storm we face, and He invites us to rest in His presence, knowing that He is working all things for His glory. So this verse from Psalms is a great reminder for all of us here tonight that in the midst of chaos, we are invited to be still. We are invited to pause and we are invited to rest while recognizing God's sovereignty over everything. You know, oftentimes peace in our world today just seems elusive. It almost seems like some sort of made up fairy tale that will never come true. And so many of us will cite like the wars in the Middle East. Look at all of that craziness that's going on over there. We just see no immediate end to that. We see no peace there. Consider the political divide in our nation, all right? Unity just seems like some sort of distant dream. Look at all of the rise of natural disasters in many parts of the world. Many of us are still left feeling the economic instability left from those disasters. You know, think about the economic instability within our whole world. Just financial security just seems to be out of reach for so many individuals. You know, think about all of those people that simply suffer uh, from being homeless and being out on the streets without having a, a home anywhere. Think about the increase in mental health crises and those that are just simply struggling to find hope and healing. There's so many situations in our world that say that the world is not at peace. And honestly, it can feel like the world is even out of control. But I believe that this is why this is a relative topic to be able to talk about here today. It just seems like the chaos never ends, right? And it just seems like we can never get to a place where we can find peace. And why is that? Well, I believe it's because we are human beings. And as human beings, we are born in a fallen world something that I would call we are born in a sinful world. And sin to me is defined as just basically two things. Original sin, which refers to the inherent sinfulness and moral corruption that all humans inherit as a result of Adam and Eve's disobedience in the Garden of Eden. It's the condition that predisposes every single human being to sinful behavior and separates us from being with God. Now, the other thing that I look at as probably being sinful is our personal sin. And this is the conscience and willful disobedience to God and his known law and his will. And it's when an individual basically knowingly chooses to act against God's commandments or fails to do what God has instructed. Personal sin is not just simply being specific about certain rules, but it's about violating our relationship with God by acting in ways that are contrary to his holy nature, all right? And so because we live in a sinful world and because we are human beings that are fallen ourselves, oftentimes this is what results in all of the craziness and all of the chaos that we live in. Now, 
Here's the the thing that I simply want to talk about with us here is that Jesus in the book of John chapter 16, verse 33, he simply said this, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace because in the world you will have trouble. I'm going to read that again. It says, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. (laughs) I have overcome the world. So no matter the chaos and no matter the strife and the troubles that we face within the world today, I truly believe as a Christian that God is in control. I truly believe that no matter all of the craziness and all of the chaos, God is still sovereign and he's still on the throne and he's still in control of all things. And so tonight we're going to unpack this question from that perspective. But before we really get knee deep into everything, I simply ask you at this point, You know, drop us a comment. Let us know what you're thinking right now about this. What do you think of this crazy world that we live in? What do you think of the noise that just seems so loudest to you within the season of life that we're in? Maybe even talk about sin. What do you think about that? Drop us your thoughts in the comment section below. As Pastor Phil just stated, what kind of noise seems loudest to you in this season of life? Why do you think this world is so crazy? Please take a moment and drop your comments and thoughts in the chat. All right, so our first main point that we're going to be simply talking about here tonight is understanding peace as more than the absence of trouble. All right, understanding peace is more than the absence of trouble. So often when we think about peace, we think that everything around us is all calm. We think that everything around us is just all getting along with each other and going, And then we think that everything else around us is just all nice and wonderful and relaxing and going, ah. Okay, maybe not quite like that, but you kind of get my point. So biblical peace is so much more than just simply (laughs) having a a deep sense of well-being and assurance around us. All right. It is knowing and understanding that God is in control over all things, regardless of whatever outside circumstances are going on, all right? Now, I'm gonna read to you a story from Mark chapter four, verses 35 through 41. This is what the word of the Lord says. It says, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, being Jesus, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with them. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over in the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. (laughs) The disciples woke him and he said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. And then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified. And they asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. You know, the great thing about this story is that the disciples themselves seemed overwhelmed. I don't know if that is speaking to you maybe at this moment, but I know it's kind of speaking to me and understanding that even the disciples were overwhelmed. They were overwhelmed with fear. They were overwhelmed as the storm around them was raging and just going nuts. 
And then the waves are crashing into the boat and they thought they were just simply about to drown. And then notice, this is, this is the posture of our Lord and Savior. Was he scared? Was he worried? No, notice that Jesus was asleep. He was resting peacefully in the midst of the storm. And his peace wasn't really dependent on any of the outside things that's going on. He didn't care about the storm because then when he finally awoke, he simply spoke to the storm and it was calmed. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And so the peace that Jesus exemplifies here is not just simply the absence of trouble. It's the presence. It's the presence of faith in God's sovereignty. Now, Jesus knew that he was safe in the Father's hands, right? And that's what helped allow him to remain calm, even when everything around him was just simply in chaos. And I think this is something that can speak to you and to me tonight here. Because this is the same peace that Jesus is offering to us, amen? This is the same kind of peace that surpasses all understanding. This is a peace that is grounded in the unshakable reality that God is in control. And so when we talk about peace in the biblical sense, we're not just simply talking about a bunch of people surrounding a tree and singing kumbaya. <laughs> we're talking about a true peace, a peace that's rooted in the knowledge that God is with us. It could be storming outside. It could be raging on the outside. It could be doing that even on the inside of who we are. But I'm just here to tell you, folks, that Jesus can calm the storm of your life. Peace isn't just a mode that we're in just to survive. And it's simply more than just the absence of trouble. But trust me, peace is all about understanding that it's rooted in understanding the power and sovereignty of who God is. So what are your thoughts on this story here tonight, all right? What are your thoughts on understanding peace as more than just the absence of trouble? Take a moment and drop some comments in the chat below. I see you, I know you want to put a comment in, just do it, okay? Drop a comment in the chat. As Pastor Phil just mentioned, what are your thoughts on understanding peace as more than the absence of trouble? Please take a moment and drop your comments and thoughts in the chat. Hey, we're back and we're back with our next point. And so we're going to be continuing our discussion by looking at the practice of stillness. All right. Say that with me. The practice of stillness. You see, stillness really is a discipline and it requires us to step back to be able to breathe and then remember that God is God. Amen. Now, sometimes that is really difficult for us. We live in a world where we're taught that action is more important than simply resting or breathing or taking a moment for yourself to collect your thoughts. And so we're often taught that action is the number one go to for how we feel on how we need to achieve peace. But when we look at the scriptures, that's the complete opposite. Oftentimes, it just takes a moment to step back, to breathe, and remember that God is God. So what does this look like for us within our Christian life? Well, 
It looks like this. It looks like setting aside time each day to pray, to be able to meditate on the scriptures, to actually not just read some stuff on some pages in a book, but to be able to meditate, to be able to think, to be able to dialogue within ourselves and, and ask ourselves, what is God asking of me from this piece of scripture? What is this trying to tell me in my life? Is this trying to give me some wisdom and guidance on some things within my life? And then it takes simply sitting in silence before the Lord and trusting that he's at work within our lives. Now, the Bible frequently calls us into this practice of stillness, reminding us of the importance of it all within our spiritual lives. Let me ask you out there, all right? How many of you would rather stay busy than stay still? All right? How many of you would rather be busy rather than being still. You know, our society, again, it's ingrained that we should just stay busy because busy is more productive than being still. And this is why this verse, I think, is a challenge for us in our world today. It really is. Uh, many Christians are challenged by this because they would rather be busy than rather being still. And I think it's that way just simply because we regard busyness as being higher up on the ladder, as being something to be regarded as a good trait and quality, rather than being just simply still. Stillness often is associated in our world today with laziness. And nobody wants to be lazy or be called lazy, right? And so what do we do? We just stay busy. We go from one thing to the next. Yet the Bible, the word of God, it calls us into stillness. Do you know that? It calls us into stillness. We are to be still and we must recognize that God is sovereign over all things. And I honestly think that this can be a very humbling experience, especially when we take the time to do it. I know for me, when I take the time to do it, I can just improve my life quality and situations at least tenfold. Because oftentimes I work myself up, I'll stay busy, you get more productive, and then, you know, the harder you work, they always say the luckier you get, right? And that's true in some situations. We do have to work hard. I'm not trying to take away anything from hard work. But there's also times in our lives and, and moments in our life where we need to learn the rhythm of stillness. And I believe God is reminding of this moment of stillness because it's within this stillness we're reminded of his power over the situations that's confronting us. We're reminded of how powerful he is. And when the world around us is just filled with craziness and it's filled with chaos, and when you get that guy calling you on your phone for the 10th time trying to remind you about something that you have absolutely no clue what it is, you know, this is where our crazy world just seems to kind of get out of control. When the world around us is just filled with chaos, remember this scripture, be still and know that I'm God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. When we are still, we, we are truly still, we're intentionally stepping away from the chaos and the noise of the world to be able to focus on the singular presence of a holy and almighty God. We're singularly focused on his authority over all things. You know, another powerful reminder of this comes from 1 Kings chapter 19, verse um, 11 through 12. And this is when Elijah encounters God. This is what the scriptures say. It says, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. <laughs> and after the fire came a gentle whisper. You see, Elijah in this story had just experienced a tumultuous period in his life filled with fear and anxiety. And God didn't speak to him through some sort of dramatic act and force of nature. God spoke to Elijah in this period of his life in a very gentle whisper, an almost moment of stillness. And it was in this quiet moment that Elijah truly encountered God in all of who he was. 
And the practice of stillness is simply more than just finding a quiet place just to simply be quiet. It's learning how to take a posture of cultivating a quiet heart. It's about creating a space within our lives to hear the gentle whisper of the Lord in our hearts, in our minds, in all of who we are. And when we intentionally set aside time to be still, we remind ourselves that God's at work even when we can't see it. And we practice trust this way. Oh, what a discipline it is to practice trust in God these days and know that his plans are unfolding in his perfect timing. And our fast-paced world today, this is a very challenging discipline. This is a very hard topic sometimes to even bring up and talk about, but it's essential because by practicing stillness, you know, we are aligning our hearts with the rhythm of who God is intending us to be. And we are allowing his peace to fill us and to be able to have his voice lead us and to guide us in all things. So what's your take on practicing stillness in your life? Drop us some comments in the chat below. We live in a world where staying busy is usually regarded as being more important than being still. What are some ways you try to find yourself being still in the presence of God? Please take a moment and drop your comments and thoughts in the chat. All right, now here are some ways and some next steps to help grow in your understanding and experience of peace. And so here's three things that you can do right here, right now. Number one, get into some daily devotions, all right? Set aside time each day to read the scriptures and pray, focusing on God's promises of peace. Number two, meditate on the scriptures, meditate on God's word. Memorize Psalm 46.10 or memorize Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Meditate on these verses. Memorize these verses. Keep these verses in your heart and mind. And then whenever you just feel overwhelmed by life circumstances, let these verses minister to you in your heart, within your soul, and within your entire being. Number three, connect with a community. Engage with others who are also seeking peace whether it's through the mobile sanctuary here tonight, or maybe it's through a local church or get into a small group Bible study, find a community to share your journey with so that others can be uh, an encouragement to you and you can help encourage others. Let's take a moment to pray together here tonight. Heavenly Father, we come before you in awe of who you are and your greatness. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth, and you hold all things together in your hands. We praise you for your sovereignty and your perfect peace that is beyond our understanding. Lord, we confess that too often we allow the chaos of this world to overwhelm us. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for all of the times where we put the chaos and the storms and the troubles before are trusting in you. Lord, we struggle sometimes just to trust you fully. And sometimes we just struggle to be still within your presence. Forgive us, God, for our anxious thoughts and for trying to control what only you can. We thank you, God, for the peace that you do offer us. 
a peace that comes from your son, Jesus Christ, a peace that's not dependent on our circumstances, but God, a peace that uh, is your unchanging nature of who you are. Thank you, Lord, for being our refuge and strength and an ever-present help in times of need. We lift up our mobile sanctuary community to you. We pray those uh, tonight that are struggling with physical uh, situations, Father. We pray for those that are dealing with uh, emotional or mental burdens. Lord, we pray that you grant these individuals the peace and healing that they need. God, we ask that you surround them with your love and remind them that you are with them even in the midst of their storms. Lord, so send them, Lord, your angels to minister to them. We ask that, Lord, you just touch each and every single individual and person that is listening or watching this session here tonight. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining us here tonight on The Mobile Sanctuary. I hope you have found this session encouraging and uplifting to your soul. And I hope that you feel a little bit more equipped to be able to seek and find God's peace no matter what is going on in your life. Remember, the world will always have its troubles and its craziness and all of its chaos. But God gives us the gift of his peace through his son, Jesus Christ. He also gives us the gift of stillness and worship to be able to help refocus our lives on what matters most. And that is being in right relationship with him. And so next week, we will be back with another terrific session. So stay tuned and keep seeking God in all things. So until next time, I'm Pastor Phil, and this has been Church Anywhere. We hope to see you soon. God bless. Goodbye. Welcome to the Mobile Sanctuary, where the